Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim November 9th 2020 Dars highlights Major themes include seeing the nur is more than a miracle and genuine sheikhs teach their disciples esoteric knowledge One part of the dars consisted of the sheikh's response to a murid a new faqir from Egypt who had a dream in which he saw the sheikh and another sheikh in the dream another Egyptian sheikh was involved and one of the points that the sheikh made is the importance of following one imam, one sheikh and he said only Fir'aun, only the pharaoh had two sheikhs Harun and Musa the sheikh also commented on the grandeur of the Bay'a that the Murid takes, the Bay'a of light. And he said that the evidentiary miracles of the saints, of the Awliya, typically feature the folding of time or of space. And the and these saintly miracles involve something of the here below, the habitual course of nature, of things in the here below is interrupted. Nur, on the other hand, is beyond time and space. Nur is the substance from which time and space are created. And to convey and transmit the Nur is greater than any miracle that involves time and space. It's not correct to say that the sheikh's method of initiation is just a miracle because miracles actually fall beneath the nur they involve the folding of something in the realm of the dunya a karama a gift or a charismatic gift saintly miracle or a post prophetic evidential miracle of a saint is actually a small branch a secondary branch in relation to the pure meaning of Nurullah. A subject uh, came up that's uh, related to the first subject about uh, having two sheikhs and and having more than one sheikh in one's heart. And uh, the sheikh said that he affirms his own sheikh, he acknowledges him and him alone because he's the one who transmitted knowledge to him. And he emphasized the importance of the sheikh's function as a transmitter of esoteric knowledge. And that a sheikh doesn't conceal his ma'rifa and his secret from a murid who is worthy of being instructed in the spiritual path. Sayyiduna Ali, karramallahu wazha, proclaimed himself to be the dot, a nukta. In other words, he said, I am the ink. I am the spirit of the pen. I am that by which the Quran itself was written. I am the root, the esoteric reality by which the Quran was written. And echoing the statements of Sayyiduna Ali, we say in one of our poems, بابها سيدنا علي وهي الآن لي The door to the city of knowledge is Sayyiduna Ali and now it is mine, it belongs to me that knowledge, in other words that flowing, that esoteric reality and gnosis is made to be mine in the present age and I say it openly and I divulge this with God's leave or with divine permission. If others have genuine secrets and sciences, but God instructs them to conceal those sciences, then that's a proof that they are unable to help others. And these types of sheikhs who criticize us for so-called divulging the secrets of the path if they are seen by their disciples or if, if they claim to be 
pole or a seal, a khatam qodab or a watad, these other stations, a watad means literally a tent peg, then they are that thing, they are a khatam or a qodab just for themselves. Muhammad Fawzi al Karkari is a khatam, a seal for all people, by virtue of the fact that you see the seal stamped and inscribed on your heart. Allah Ta'ala says, لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him belong the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. God is not stingy with his kingdom of the heavens and the earth. You're nothing but a servant of God within his kingdom. And yet he made everyone under his command within his kingdom. You say Sheikh so-and-so has secrets of the path, but he's locked them away with a key for himself. And the Prophet ﷺ says that God whips those who hide knowledge or their secrets, those who can't divulge them. God whips those who conceal knowledge with one of the whips of hellfire. The Sheikh comments that those who can't divulge, uh, who can't speak out and critique us, and say that to see the divine light is one of the secrets of the path that mustn't be divulged, then we say, why did God divulge it in the Qur'an? It is as though the Prophet ﷺ divulged a secret, and then the exoteric scholars or the ulama go about hiding it and concealing it again. I'll cut to the chase and tell you that... They are like donkeys carrying scrolls. They claim but don't actually possess a sir. They will say, we only divulge the sir to its folk, to those who are worthy of it. But if you get a murid who is thirsty, who prays in private his duas, who supplicates God for an opening, asks God for a fatah, then that murid is worthy of being instructed in the sir. That murid has received God's pre-eternal attentive care and is among the elect. He is among the khawas. This type of murid serves you, becomes a servant at your hands and asks you to take him to his Lord. Murid coming with this intention after performing the istikhara prayer of consultation and night visuals. This type of murid has to be taught esoteric knowledge. We have murids praying to God to find a sheikh as they're doing tawaf. And you tell me then, oh no, these are asrar, you can't tell them? I'll tell you the asrar, the secrets that cannot and should not be taught. Sihr, black magic. But if you say you have something, but you can't tell it to a murid, then you want to be paid a high price for it in return for your sihr. We have murids who come from parents who themselves are Sufis. They have a barakah of their ancestors flowing through them, asking for the sheikh to take them by the hand in return for serving the sheikh. And you say, no, this is a sir, it's only for those who are worthy of it. Why and who gave you that sir then? Gabriel himself, alayhi salam, the archangel, if you're a wali, you took it from a wali. Why do you deprive others from it? When you see someone of this type, it's indicative of the existence of shaitan, whims, caprice, hawa, something extraneous to the sir that they claim. And if you dig, you'll see it. God's folk, ahlullah, when a genuine murid comes to them, whose furthest goal is Allah, not ruqya, not to have healing powers or anything like that. They are instructed in the path. Read the biography of Al-Buzidi. He shows up at the door of Mulay al-Arbi al-Darqawi, the great 18th, 19th century reviver of the Shadiliya, the great Pole, and student of Sidi Ali Jamal. Now, why did uh, what did Imam al-Darqawi do? He opens the door for al-Wuzidi. He stands at his door, at the door of his home and says, Who are you? 
Bouzidi introduces himself. He came from a city, originally from a city called Sidi Qasim in Morocco. And Darqawi says, I've been waiting for you. I received an inspiration. And the dunya had become too constrained for Imam Darqawi. Uh, he was experiencing a great hardship after the death of his sheikh, Sidi Ali Jamal. Because when Sidi Ali Jamal died, all of the murids around him began to fight among themselves. And he just put on a patched cloak and started to beg the streets of Fez to feed his family. And Tarqawi had a dream that a murid would come to him from beyond the ocean. And Bouzidi says, I came from the region of Tangier where I study, which is near the ocean. And he had been searching for a sheikh. So Imam Tarqawi takes him in and teaches him the usul, the foundations of the path, for 16 years. And he teaches him how to return to his Lord through companionship. And from that point onward, the murids begin to grow across the world. Why did Imam Tarqawi say, I was waiting for you? The same reason why the Prophet ﷺ says, the best among you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. It seems like today we've taken this hadith to mean that the best among you are those who simply memorize the Qur'an by rote and then help others memorize it. But it actually means learning the sciences and the secrets of the Qur'an, the secrets of the vowels, the letters, the oaths, the disconnected letters, the revelation, its manner of descent, and teaching that to others. I acknowledge one sheikh, mine, because I took my knowledge from him, and his grace flows through me. I don't acknowledge others because I did not take from others. If you acknowledge others, show us what you learned from them. When you look deep down, you'll find that you just memorized images, forms, verses, lines, a true and genuine sheikh has a hidden treasure that others don't possess. And if that sheikh imparts upon you or gives you a treasure, you have to divulge it and tell others of it. Otherwise, you are doing violence to the one who is generous towards you. You are harming the one who graciously gave you that treasure. Don't praise others that you did not draw a treasure from. Don't say anything good about them or bad about them. If you see a deficiency in them, pray for their guidance. If you see goodness in them, pray for God to increase them in the goodness that they have. But most of all, remain silent. If you don't even really understand what a seeker of God is, what a murid actually means, then how can you know what a sheikh is? Let me tell you what a sheikh is. Sheikh consists of three letters, Shin Ya Kha, Sharib Khamrat, or Sharib Yaqeen Al Khamra, one who has drank the certainty of the wine, or the wine of certainty, one who has fully imbibed the intoxicating wine of divine knowledge. Murids in their testimonials say, I see the Nur. They witness it directly. They don't say, wow, his words were really eloquent. The sheikh's lectures were amazing. I love what the sheikh says. No, they say, I witness the nur. Murids divulge what they witness, not what they heard of. You can hear the dars of a sheikh, and it could just be memorized words. I could be sitting here behind a podium and... MashaAllah, perhaps I would open Bukhari, astaghfirullah, and just begin to quote hadiths, but without saying that the Prophet said them, alayhi salatu salam. They're not my pearls, but I'm just conveying reports on my tongue. My container itself is empty, it's dark, and you're dazzled by me with my dark container by virtue of the pearls of others that I'm quoting. Look at Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salatu He stutters. He's not eloquent. 
This is the case of your Shaykh. Sayyiduna Musa والسلام, stutters and is not eloquent, and yet his nur floods upon his limbs and illuminates his hand and dazzles others when he pulls out his right hand from under his arm. And who is the one who speaks on behalf of Sayyiduna Musa والسلام, It's none other than Harun, who is a lot more eloquent and charismatic than his older brother Sayyiduna Musa والسلام, but you cannot place Sayyiduna Harun and Sayyiduna Musa at the same level. Sayyiduna Musa is among Ulul Azm, the prophets of resolution, and Harun is his support, he's his wazir. You can't call Sayyiduna Harun والسلام, a Ulul Azm, a messenger, and so on. So speak of and convey about those that you take from, that you draw your marifa from. And if you don't, you're like a son that doesn't acknowledge his father. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barak ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim في العالمين إنك 